Hello friends, welcome back to my channel for another custom action figure video. Today we're gonna to be customizing this BMS Return of the King 112 scale figure, AKA Superman from Kingdom Come. Now, Superman is my favorite character of all time. This figure is based on Alex Ross's take on Superman, specifically the version he did in Kingdom Come with writer Mark Wade. Now, Superman is the reason I got into comic books period. And later on in my life, seeing Alex Ross's Superman is what set me on the path to become a professional comic book writer and artist for a living. And more recently, I've actually worked with Mark Wade in the publishing capacity where I have two graphic novels out through the imprint Humanoids with one more on the way. And Mark Wade was serving as the publisher at Humanoids. So he brought me in to the fold and gave me a book deal and, and we've become friends since. So this is a really important version of this character for me. And uh, I'm very, very happy to have one of these I actually picked up a second one because what I want to do is turn it into the classic style Alex Ross Superman. So let's lay out some supplies, take a closer look at the figure, and talk about what we're going to do to him. Before we get into the figure, I want to take a quick look at some of the images that I first saw of Alex Ross's Superman that led me on the path to becoming a professional comic book artist myself. I had been into Superman as a little kid. The Christopher Reeve movies were my gateway into it. By the way, Superman 4 is an awesome Superman movie, and uh, one day I'll post a video that is like my dissertation on why it's good. <laughs> I had kind of fallen away from comics as I got older and then Smallville came out and that's what got me back into Superman. And then I was gifted this book. It is the complete history of Superman. It has this old, you know, Schuster and Siegel era image on the cover. But when you pull back the dust jacket, it has this Alex Ross interpretation of the same image. Now I've always been completely floored by realistic versions of cartoony things. I think that's probably pretty evident in some of my action figures, like my Kaneda figure, um, a few others that I've made on the channel. So seeing this absolutely changed my life. I was like, wait, what? You can do that? You can make him look like a real person? So I mean, just look at the, that's so cool. We also got a glimpse of the Kingdom Come Superman on the inside of this book, as well as this spread image from Superman, Peace on Earth. I, to this day, I get chills looking at this image. I think this is a, just a perfect interpretation of Superman. Uh, also in the back of this, we have this image from the lenticular set of covers and the poster, I think it was, where Clark Kent is gradually t turning into Superman. We also had this image on the back. So yeah, absolutely floored by this. I had to track down all his work. I became obsessed with learning to paint learning what kind of paint he used, etc. And you can see the image that that was an homage to. So cool. So naturally when this figure came out, I really wanted it, but I kind of slept on it. And then thankfully I was able to order a couple when they restocked. I think this is just a fantastic interpretation of Alex Ross's Superman. So what I want to do with this is make it look like the, the classic Alex Ross version. To do that, we're going to do three things. We're going to paint his hair black. We're going to change the S and we're going to paint this belt. On top of that, I would like to reduce the bulk of the cape a bit. If you spread this thing out, that's just huge. That's so much cape. He doesn't need all that. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is cut it to be about like that because when it hangs, you can fold it over a bit, but it ends up just being so bulky and it doesn't cut the right silhouette. It's always gonna look about like this and I really want it to have a more slender silhouette like this. And also you can see it's like longer at the ends and so it ends up doing this thing where it's longer on the outside and shorter in the middle now specifically when alex ross draws superman he does draw the cape kind of hanging a bit it usually goes past the blue and in doing so that means that it dips in the middle more than on the outsides so this is actually causing the opposite to happen so i would like to rectify that by cutting this now i've seen people have been popping the this top neck piece off i guess it comes off pretty easily and then the cape is hooked underneath so I will be messing with that most likely to get this trimmed out. I love the, the way that it lays on the shoulders though. So I don't want to compromise that too much. So I may just end up laying it as flat as I can and cutting it like this. Cause I, I do want to maintain the shoulder bits and like the way that the silhouette looks there. I'm not going to get into a review of this figure. There are a ton out there already. I got this one kind of late. So we're already probably like a dozen up. But suffice it to say, this figure is fantastic. This is probably one of my figure of the year contenders already, and it's only February. So the only thing I wish is that it had a wired cape, but I do like the drape cape look as well. So I'm not mad at it and I can always wire the cape if I want to, but I, I think I want it to drape. So let's take a look at the supplies that we're gonna use. 
So first and foremost, Angelus yellow acrylic leather paint. This is what we're gonna paint the belt with. I think I'm gonna keep this gold buckle because I just think it looks cool and I think it'll pair nicely with the yellow. The belt has a seam right here, so it should probably just come off pretty easily by tugging on this and yep, all right, well. <laughs> For the hair, I'm just gonna use some of this miniature paint. I got this in a set. I'll put a link in the description below for, for all the supplies here. Also wanna bring the temples in a bit. So like, as you can see, it kinda goes straight down. I wanna bring this out a little bit because as you can see on this image, the hairline doesn't go straight. It, it comes out like this. That's just what people's hairlines generally look like. So that's something I wanna fix. I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do for the S and I was thinking maybe like a thin piece of styrene bent to shape. I didn't want to paint over it because there are some slight like raises and indentations with the difference in the black and the red. So trying to paint over that, you would see the old one underneath and I didn't want to do that. I would like to kind of preserve what's here. I don't want to make it like screwed up by adding glue to it or anything like that. And then I remembered that I have colored electrical tape and it just so happens that it is the perfect size to go across and then I'm gonna cut the S out of the red and lay that on top of that. The nice thing about electrical tape is it'll hold pretty well, but I will be able to peel it off without worrying about like too much residue. You know, ideally the Alex Ross S is like huge. It would come down to about here and span kind of his whole chest. But because of the way the stitching is on this and because the S is raised, I don't wanna mess with all that. I'm just gonna use what's here. This should be a pretty easy one. I think the hardest part will be the cape. Excited to dive into this. I'll check back in with some progress here. Okay, with the yellow tape, starting with a pretty straight cut, and now I can kind of see what needs to come off of it. And I think it's actually gonna take maybe two layers of this to be totally opaque so you don't see the other one behind it. So now I can see where that was and where I need to make my cuts. I'm always praising the virtues of these little tweezers and I highly recommend getting some. They make these kind of jobs much, much easier. Okay, so I used some tracing paper to just mark the corners of the yellow shield. I'm just gonna connect them. It's the first time I've used this Lazy Susan thing for a project like this. Usually I just use it to show off like a finished thing, but this is actually coming in handy. So I might start incorporating this more. I'll put a link in the description for one of these. You can get motorized ones, but I like having one that I do myself, so. All right, there we have the S as close to his style as I could get it. I think he draws these points wider, so that allows for more room for the S to kind of reach inside. So this was the most accurate I could get it given the dimensions that I have. Uh, but I do like this. This is just kind of a nice classic Superman S. I'll probably screw this up a couple times, but you know, that's the trial and error that we go through with this stuff. So I okay, wanted to show real quick how I'm doing this. So I actually laid a piece of tape down on the cutting mat here. And then I put the tracing paper over it and I'm just cutting it on top of the tape. And it seems to be working so far, but I won't know for sure until I pull this paper back. Okay, I got the S cut out and it worked out pretty well so far. So that upper corner is a kind of a guide post for where this is gonna go. We are getting there. I do have some iron-on vinyl that I thought about using, and that may end up being something I do if this doesn't work out, but I feel like this is working. It just needs a lot of fine tuning. All right, got it on there, and I'm pretty happy with it. I may want to try a different approach down the line, but I think for right now, it's working just fine. Uh, it is a little more raised than I wanted it to be. That, that double layer of yellow did kind of make it stick up a bit more than I wanted. I do like that the S is slightly raised though, because I do like a three-dimensional S on Superman's chest. Okay, so I haven't touched this for a week uh, since last weekend. I've been busy with work and whatnot. This is the state of progress on the belt. It's not working. <laughs> the paint is too bright of a yellow, got a green to it, it's very neon almost. So I have to find another solution. The other problem that has arisen is that the electrical tape is not sticking. But I wanted to change this anyway. The more I thought about it, you can see a bit of a yellow ridge there, like right at the edge. And I don't want any yellow to show through. I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, but I can see it just by looking at this thing. The yellow part is higher than this red border. 
and I just, I don't like the way it looks. So I wanted to find another solution anyway. One of the solutions that I was going to use for this is this iron-on vinyl. I got a big pack of assorted colors on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to try some. Now, one of the reasons this yellow paint wasn't going to work is because if I use this vinyl, look at that difference. Now, this is only a few coats. I would have to layer this up quite a bit. The yellow difference is it's just too strong. And so what I'm going to do is just cut a strip out. So I'm going to cut the S out, iron it together. I'm still going to have to deal with adhering it to this. And I think double stick tape is going to be the move there. It's pretty thin. It doesn't leave a lot of residue. I think it'll work pretty well. That's the best solution I have come up with for this. So we're going to see how it goes. This is the second iterate, third iteration of the belt, maybe. <laughs> um, basically, I tried to fold a piece of the vinyl over the top of it, and I got a lot of bunching along the, the edge, and then I realized, oh, I should just like sandwich it between two pieces and then cut the excess off. So that's what I'm doing here. It needs a little bit of cleanup right there, but this is all in all working much better. So I'm gonna keep going on this. Uh, and then uh, I also got the S finished. This was a little less clean than I wanted, but I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. So just about done here. I'm gonna do the hair next and then hopefully we'll get this guy wrapped up. Okay, so we've got the belt done, the S is done, and then the cape is also done actually. Now, initially I had talked about trying to trim the cape, but what I realized is with this kind of material, uh, you have kind of a grain or like a weave to it that has a direction and it, you know, like if you look, you can see these vertical lines here. And if I were to cut in any way against that, we would get a bunch of like little frayed edges. And I was like, you know what, this has been such a pain already, like way harder than I thought it would be. I don't want to mess with that. So what I ended up doing was taking a bunch of little tiny magnets. These are rare earth. I think neodymium is how you say it, magnets. And you can see they're really tiny and I use these all the time for various projects. I bunched up the cape how I wanted it, like folded over the layers, and then I just put magnets inside of the layers. So you don't really see much of them from this angle at all. Like, I mean, just looking at it, you really don't know that they're there, but they're holding it in place so that the cape doesn't fan out too much. It also adds some weight to it, so it, it you know, just kind of has more of a, a nice drape to it. So that, I think, was a really, really perfect solution for this, and I'm very happy with it. I'll put a link in the description below to those magnets. They come in different sizes, and they're all useful, but those little tiny ones are really helpful because they just kind of disappear. So, uh, so next is the hair, and then that's going to finish them off. So I think I'm going to do a brown base coat first just to kind of help neutralize the white. Okay, so I got the brown on there and then I also went in and made his eyes blue because they were just kind of a solid dark color and made his eyebrows a little darker. They kind of had him looking like a, like a girl, like a teenage girl in the late 90s. <laughs> so uh, yeah, darkening the eyebrows, lightening the eyes. I don't know how well you can see. The eyes are very small on this figure. All right, and here it is, my finished custom BMS Toys Alex Ross Superman. Very, very happy with how this turned out. As I mentioned at the outset, I'm a huge fan of Alex Ross's Superman. Superman is my favorite character. This was such a cool thing to have come out and to be able to customize and turn it into one of my favorite iterations of Superman. Let's take a look at it here. Now I have a glove on because my hands are kind of dry and this fabric catches any little dryness on your skin and wants to kind of get like all fuzzy. So. Very happy with the cape drape setup. It doesn't bunch back here and it, it looks held together from the front and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to cut a, a tighter silhouette and I think it just makes a huge difference. You know, before it was kind of like a triangle and I don't really like that look. I like it to be straight down as much as possible. Now I do have a second of the Kingdom Come Superman figures because I wanted one of the Kingdom Come because I, I love that book. It was very uh, monumental and instrumental in my comics journey in, into becoming a comics professional. And so I definitely wanted to have that, but I, I really wanted this version as well. So I'm going to get the other one out and we're going to take a look at the two of them next to each other. And you can see what I mean with the cape difference, like how much this one kind of sticks more in line with his form, whereas that one wants to 
come out off the shoulders quite a bit. And that's after me messing with it to try to tuck the cape back some more. Now the younger Superman here is gonna pull focus a bit uh, into the foreground, but you can see the difference in the hairline. The way that stepping it out like that and having it come up just creates a more realistic look. Again, the cape is much more contained and controlled. It's, you know, I never have the original to compare to the custom, so this is really nice. <laughs> and I'll probably end up doing some paintwork on the Kingdom Come version as well, just to kind of get it where I want it to be. So getting in close here, let's take a look at the faces with the eyes. I got a new phone recently and the camera is so much better and it's so nice to be able to do this kind of stuff now <laughs> when I, I could not get this close before. Um, but you can see on the right, he's got the blue eyes. So having them lightened up quite a bit, I feel like makes a really big difference. The one on the left, the eyes look almost kind of black. I made the eyebrows a little darker. I wish he didn't look so kind of serious and determined. I love a more neutral face Superman. Very cool to have this representation on my shelf. I'm so excited. I, this is such a pure distilled version of the character. So that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. It's always the easy ones. I say this every time, but whenever I have one that I think is gonna be pretty easy, it ends up being the most difficult. I don't know if that's because I overestimate how easy it's gonna be or what, but I learned some new stuff and hopefully you did as well. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will happily get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, you know the drill, a, a thumbs up. It helps people find this stuff. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I build and customize vehicles for my action figures, dioramas, etc. As I mentioned, I am a full-time comic book writer and artist, and I'd love for you to stick around for a moment to check out a brief trailer for my graphic novel, Count. It's my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. It's very heroic and swashbuckling. So if you like comics and heroism and that kind of thing, I invite you to check out the book. I'll have a link in the description below. So thank you again for watching. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.